Hey, JC here again for RetireCheap.Asia again, right? Uh, I'm sitting with a friend here. Uh, his name's Jim, and uh, we're up in Chiang Mai. And I met Jim a year or so ago, and all the times that we meet or we have time together to sit and talk, our, our conversations have always been interesting, and I've always wanted to share some of the things that we talk about with other people. And um, some of the things that we talk about have to do with beliefs. And I know a lot of people are facing challenges right now back home, and their beliefs are being put into question about who they are, what direction their life should take, and that kind of thing. So I think some of the insights that we talk about would be a benefit to some of these people. Um, and I know in your life, you actually, instead of being forced into a retirement or forced into a change, which some people are going through right now, you made a, a, a conscious decision to change the direction of your life. And I think that would be a value to people because some people need to make this a, into a conscious decision instead of feeling like they're a victim and this is being forced upon them. Maybe there's a benefit on the other end about what's going to happen to their life and how their life could actually be better. So I just wanted to do a, a, little, uh, a little interview here about where you came from and how you ended up with the life you have now because you work for a big company okay, that everybody's going to know the name of and there was a certain point where you said well this is really enough success for me and this is not really the road that I want to travel now and so you came to a crossroads in your life and you made a decision. Could you talk just a little bit about you know, what you were doing, uh, why you were doing it and then what changed to make you go down a different path? Well, I think uh, I've always been driven by the fact that I never knew what I wanted to be when I grew up as a kid. And uh, I got the best education I could and came from a very conservative background which says get educated, get a good job, get better, stay with it, make a lot of money and retire with the, the gold watch. Uh, I never related to that in any way. And while I was getting educated, I was actually in a pre-legal curriculum. Uh, one strain that uh, began early in my life and never stopped was my interest in art. I was constantly working artistic progress. Uh, my brother and I started out with a band. Uh, I wrote plays. I was an actor. I was all over the board. And the things uh, I really enjoyed, I never considered as a, a way to make a living because I enjoyed them too much. Yeah, you can't you can't earn money and have fun at the same time. That's right. right. That's, that's right. right. That's also the, a belief a lot of people have. The work ethic. You're yeah. going to have a good time, or you're going to get a real job. <laughs> right. So, my life has pretty much been one accident after another. The things that pulled the triggers, and uh, I don't. I believe we're not spectators in our own future, our own history, our own lives. Uh, everything is based on our choices. Uh, not to choose is a choice in itself, so That's right. no such thing as neutrality right. there. But I accidentally got picked up in a nationwide sweep uh, when Disney opened its theme park in Florida. They were populating the art department, and I went for a five-minute interview, thought the guy was going to throw me out of his office for having the gall to uh, participate in this show interview. Up. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, because I had no background in art, legitimate education-wise. Uh, they hired me and I was delighted because Florida had the coral reefs I wanted to dive on. And I thought, I can enjoy Florida before they discover they've hired a fraud and throw me out. Uh, much to my surprise and a little bit to my dismay, they kept promoting me and giving me more responsibility. And I thought, well, I'll go ahead and try that. I have no background in that either. Yeah, I just keep diving until they figure it out, and then and I'll, I'll move on. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> and one time I told them, I said, you know, I had no intention of being in management, managing artists. Uh, so uh, if I uh, fail at this, do us both a favor and get rid of me. So <laughs> I kind of prepared myself for quitting or being fired within the first year. Well, it went on for, I would say, over 12 years. Wow, over 12 uh, years. When I left, I was uh, the art director of Walt Disney World. 
and I just flat out resigned. I gave them two weeks' notice, and I told them they were ruining my life. <laughs> <laughs> and I all this success <laughs> isn't good for me, huh? I just uh, didn't relate to that. I don't. I never saw myself in a company. I, I, I like to be independent, and uh, the one thing I wanted to get back to was freelancing for the variety. The Disney gig was just great. It was a baptism of fire. I kept getting more and more responsibility. I was dealing with huge budgets. Uh, all things I, I had no aspirations for, but I thought, hey, you know, anything we know serves us well. And uh, so it gave me the opportunity to try things I never could have tried on my own. So I really do appreciate that. Or probably I would have bailed out sooner. But finally I left with no idea of what I was going to do the next day. And I started getting offers, really interesting offers, from other companies because of my Disney background. And I had to remind myself I didn't quit Disney to go get a job. That's right. So, you had a good job. Yeah. And that wasn't, yeah. but what was it that you actually, when you gave them your notice to resign, what was it? that you were looking for that they, that wasn't fulfilling the job and the money and the notoriety you know you had you had a good position in the company you had the, you know that was your a lot of people would say well that was their identity and you're giving that up what were you giving it up for well as i said before i never related to seeing myself in a structured framework i was always worried everybody seemed to know exactly what they wanted to be when they grow up and uh, one of my first traumas was as a kid in school and the teacher said, today we're going to go around the room and ask everybody what they want to be. I was sweating bullets. It's like, <laughs> how the hell would I know? I'm a kid. I have yeah. no experience. And, but what really kind of intimidated me was everybody else seemed to have that idea. I never have. And when I left Disney, there was this uh, nagging desire to have more experience in the world. Maybe the only thing I ever knew in my life for certain was I wanted to see the world. Earliest recollections were as a kid looking at National Geographic and seeing Schwedegon Pagoda and uh, all these exotic sites. That I knew, I had to see that. I didn't know how that would fit into the grand scheme of things or whether I would, never occurred to me I'd have to finance that. I just had this uh, unrealistic notion that I have to do that among other things. And I think, uh, I think as a creative person, you need fresh challenges and uh, variety is a real critical part of it. And uh, if you work for a company, maybe this is the key, your life becomes one dimension. You're right. totally focused and it drains all your energy. And people ask me how I like being an artist and I said, fine until I was employed as an artist. <laughs> yeah, right. Because the things I wanted to do, the other variety, uh, you had no energy left. You know, it just all went into this company job. So well, I, I have a question was, for you. How, what advice could you give to other people to, to, to actually have them feel at ease to step out of that comfort zone because a lot of people in that situation like you were in wouldn't have stepped out of that because they knew what to expect. They, they were comfortable there even though some people regard their discomfort as being comfortable. You know, yeah. they're not happy, they're not fulfilled, they're not doing anything passionate, there's no adventure in their life, there's no new challenges. And yet, they're, I, I hate to even use the word comfortable because they're not comfortable, but it's what they become accustomed to. What advice could you give to somebody to, to step out of that and try something different, either to, to move to another country if, if they're not being fulfilled where they are, whether it's in their own city, in their own company, whatever, to be able to step out and, and maybe feel okay with change? How, what, what can you offer as advice to somebody that would allow them to be able to look at that a little differently? Because there's, a lot of people are real fearful about that. I think the key is really getting in touch with yourself. Seeing yourself and uh, making your life as original as you are. Oh, I love that. Make your life as original as you are. Yeah. That is great. I mean, what I considered my grave handicap ever since I was a kid was, unlike most people, I had no idea what I wanted to do. And then I started looking at what people called jobs and futures and security. I didn't relate to that at all. 
really worried me. I thought, can't be the rest of the world. There's something wrong with yeah, me. Actually, society looks down on people that don't know, that they don't have a plan, they don't have <clears throat> an idea of what they want to do. Society doesn't like that. Well, then know? there's a, a there is you a, don't fit in. Yeah, that's right. You're an outsider yeah. in a lot of ways, and there is a sense of security if you can find a niche in a company, in a religion, in a club. You know, you're you're I don't know shielded though from the experience of life. I think there's good and bad things about that. But I think it gets back to your original question: getting in touch with yourself and. Don't see your whole existence. What do we ask people when we first move them? What do you do? Yeah, right. Well, I work for an insurance agency. I'm a car mechanic. I'm this. Right away, we got them scoped out. No more questions. Right. You know, written off. People are much more interesting and varied and original than that. And I think if you take the time to get in touch with yourself and be honest with yourself, it refreshes your entire perspective. You don't limit yourself to this little niche that says insurance agent or uh, you know timpani player in an orchestra. You have much more going for you than that, and it opens up possibilities and options. Another thing which really surprises me. You constantly read where one, two of people's biggest fears are change and public speaking. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I can see public speaking. You know, nobody wants to get up there and, one thing and make a fool out yeah, of themselves. And one thing that never changes is change because it's always changing. That's it's right. A, it's the given. Yeah. And anybody that tries to not let things change or doesn't want things to change, they're fighting a losing battle because even no matter how much you try and keep things the same, the Everything's dynamic. The world is dynamic. And so, you know, the, the lives people have been living, you know, the lives that we've experienced in America, I don't know about Europe and these other places, but it's not the same as it was and it never will be now. And some people are sitting there waiting for it to return to the way it was it's over. and it isn't going to happen. Yeah. And so they got to adopt beliefs that allow them to adapt to this change and say, okay, well, if it's not going to be the way it is, the way it was, how do I want it? And this is to me, I want people to understand that their their life is their story, but what people don't understand is they're writing the story. They're the author of their own lives. And if it's not working or you don't like the characters, or you don't like the location of the story, change it. And don't be afraid of that, you know? Um, moving out of that idea that my life was the, that way and I liked it, and it's not that way and now I feel bad and I want it to go back. They, they got to get off that and they got to realize that that wasn't who they were, it's what they did. And who they are as a human being is so much greater than that. It's everything, okay, and the possibilities are limitless. And so what was, when you decided that you wanted to travel as a young, a young person and now traveling around because I want people to realize that coming over here, it's not that it's better or worse, it's just different. Yeah. You know, judgment of saying it's better or worse, you know, traffic's worse or noise is worse or this is better because people can actually can communicate with strangers. I'm always showing that there's a lot of things that are better, but it isn't better or worse. There's a lot of things that if you move to another country, you travel to another country, there's going to be some inconveniences, sure, because we're used to having things a certain way. But the opportunities are the things that it opens up to a human being to get out and experience different cultures. What does that mean to you? Well, I see a common denominator among a lot of people. They're afraid of change. Right. And how often do we hear people complaining about their job? You know, and I've always said, hey, it's your life. Why don't you change it? Couldn't possibly get worse, right? <laughs> but most yeah. people would rather stay with the hell they know than the unknown. And one of the big things I realized early in life, I remember the first time I went to Europe, oh man, I was like picking up every guidebook. I was over prepared. And I'm, I think I was intimidated. I will be on foreign soil. I can't speak the language. I won't be able to read the signs. Uh, it'll be a real challenge. The minute I got off uh, the airplane in Amsterdam, first uh, place I ever landed outside the United States, and then began moving on, how you use the trains. We're not used to trains in the United States. How you use local transportation, how you book a hotel, how to find a room. 
I was embarrassed at how easy it was. Once you get underway, uh, we are our own biggest obstacle. We're full of we're full of fears of the unknown. Sure. And hey, it's all life. It's all daily life. One time, one guy told me. He said, "Look at all these kids on this train in Italy. Every day they got on the train by themselves and go down the line to go to school and come back. How difficult could it be? That's you know, right, you're yeah. in that station worried about. Let's see now, what car do I got? You yeah, know. And kids are doing this. And so, like you mentioned, it's just different. Yeah. It's not worse. It's not better. It's just different. And uh, so I think it's this notion, get in touch with your, yourself, and then just erase all this garbage about the unknown fears. Uh, it's, uh, you, uh, you will be embarrassed if you're willing to change how easy it was. And the most, what's real power in a person's life is the ability to change to change their life or change their mind. The likelihood of doing it is pretty slim. But once you do it, you realize how easy it is and what it opens up to you. And you don't have to be trapped in a life that you hate, but you feel comfortable because it's what you know.